what's up guys i'm back with another video i uh, figured this time we'll do a tech video um basically because my car's not ready to be doing any kind of racing anytime soon until i do some upgrades on it so i bought a new part um this is a clutch control device it restricts the flow of the clutch fluid allowing a smoother clutch pedal on takeoff so when this is energized so on the line i'm going to hold a button it's going to energize the solenoid which is going to force the fluid around into this valve which restricts the flow so while i'm at the staging line i just push the clutch pedal to the floor and then light goes green just release as fast as i want and the fluid has to come through here and i can adjust this based on how my tires are doing track conditions how much power i'm putting down etc to make a smoother launch and i'll show you when it's once it's in the car, how the clutch pedal reacts to it, you'll actually physically see the clutch pedal moving slow, even though my foot went completely away from it right away. Um, these are the reasons why my video was late. I neglected to order some adapters. I figured this could be a little more straightforward than what it was, but heck, that's modifications for you. Nothing straightforward. Um, I have to go to inverted flare and then into a dash three on both sides. And then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wire this into the steering wheel to a push button, but I'm also gonna wire it into a relay that is hooked to the ECU. So this is only active, you know, up to about 15, 20 miles an hour. That way, if I get nervous, and I just keep holding that button while I'm racing, it does interfere with my other shifts, so. Um, later on in the video, I'll show you how it works, but I'm going to go ahead and go to a time lapse. Hope you enjoy. So I screwed up again. <laughs> so I got the wrong size fittings. I got three sixteenths instead of a quarter. So I'm gonna get a little creative and I went ahead and drilled the hole out. And we'll just hope I don't have any leaks. I hate brake lines with a passion and I don't feel like ordering parts again. So I'm gonna try to make this work. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it all works so I don't have to laugh about it later. I got all the plumbing done. Now I'm just ready for wiring. So there it is in the car. So now it's accessible underneath this hatch. So I'm gonna flip it open right there at staging lanes if I need to. Make a quick adjustment. But now I need to wire it in. Plus my steering wheel has buttons in it, so now I need to rewire those back in. I cut them off like an idiot. So here we go. 
All right, so I got the solenoid wired in. I didn't do any time lapse on it because that's kind of boring stuff, but I'll show you what I did, and then I still have some other stuff to wire up. So, got the cover back on, got the solenoid wired in. Um, I end up using the output that went to my radiator fans because at one time I used to have two sets of radiator fans. Now I have them all hooked up to one. So I'm utilizing that output from the ECU to a relay to power that. So now I need to hook in my steering wheel to interrupt, well no, not interrupt, but go in line with the relay um, signal wire. So then that way I got a redundancy there of two components that can shut it down when I don't need it. Alright, everything's done. I still need to bleed the brakes, but now I got the switch hooked up. So I'm going to turn the key on real quick. And you'll hear the solenoid click. So as I'm holding this at the staging lane, it's gonna, this guy is going to stay closed and force the fluid through here. But then I also set up in the computer, which I'll show you here in a minute, that once I hit a certain mile per hour, if I continue to hold this, it'll still become, uh, it'll open up the valve for me. That way I don't forget to let go of this on my one, two shift and from there forward. So I'll show you that here in a second. Um, I gotta bleed the brakes now. Always oh, not the brakes, the clutch, geez. So here we go. So it's all done. I just want to show you some of the things I did to set this up in the ECU. So then it's a redundant system to where the ECU will actually shut it off for me. Because we all know drag racing, there's a lot going on and you sometimes forget something. So we're hooked up to the Terminator right now. Um, I set up the output. This, used, this same output used to be for fan number two but now it's set up for this, for the launch valve. Um, don't need to set up any of this stuff unless I want to have like an input trigger where the clutch pedal will turn it on, but let's try to keep it simple, stupid. Um, so the only thing I can think of to go off of is front wheel speed and RPM. So down here uh, at zero miles per hour, or zero RPM all the way up to 27 miles an hour and zero mile per hour up to 7,000 RPM, it's gonna stay active. So wheel speed's gonna really dictate when it turns on and off. So I want it to be off the rest of the way down the track. So that's what that did. And then I wanna redo my fan control the same way because the problem is with this system, if the engine's 185 degrees and I go to turn the key on, the fans will kick on even though the engine's not running. So I wanna set it up to where it will act just similar to this to where engine RPM will dictate if it's on or off. That way if I'm sitting here tuning the car on the side of the track that it doesn't um, run my battery down for no reason. So let's go into outputs here. Get rid of that guy. Go into input. I'll oh, we'll go to the pin map, sorry. Pin map. Outputs. So there's the electric fan right there. We'll drag that out of there real quick. Go back to input outputs. I'm gonna set one up. So this is fan. Or fans. Enable. And then go to configure. Oh, we gotta pin map it, sorry. Outputs. So now fans will populate that. So now computer knows and PWM setup duty cycle 
So we're gonna do this one, coolant temp versus RPMs. And correct this, because my engine does not rev to 20,000 RPMs, which would be really cool. And coolant temp does not go that high. We'll go, I'll we'll just say 250. So now we're going to see that temp, hopefully. But. There we go. So we want the fans to kick on. Uh, let's say above 400 RPMs and above that temperature. So 100% duty cycle because we're using a relay. And then they'll turn off once they hit 167. That's a little unrealistic. Let's go 175. And that's when they should shut off. So anytime the engine's above zero, well, 467 RPMs, just make that an even 500. Then the fans will kick on and stay on when it's in this area. And I'll go ahead and send that to the ECU. Okay, so right here it's actually showing us in live view where it's sitting, so 83 degrees. So if we went ahead and went in here real quick and put this 100%, should kick the fans on. Unless I don't have this set up right. Oh, there we go. So those two guys had to be set in. Okay, so it works. So go ahead and save this. So we don't lose it. Yes. And confirm. And I'll confirm that the clutch valve is set up right before we get out of here. Cool. Same thing. So showing that's where it's sitting right now, doing nothing. Perfect. And sorry for the audio, guys. The I need to get an external microphone, but I want to show you in real time how the clutch works. So, get this set up down here. So, normal clutch. Comes out basically as fast as my foot does. Now if I, I have it tightened all the way, it'll actually hold it. So as I loosen the valve, it'll slowly come out. See a burn up clutch you're doing that. Very cool though.
as you can see, it was still spinning the tires. I do need to upgrade the tires. And then that last pole, um, I about hurt the clutch, so I just stopped there. So it's going to take some adjusting. Uh, i got to figure it out. But after I get this dialed in, it's really going to help me out a lot. Um, 60 foot should hopefully just substantially drop. But anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, see you next time.